Hello, and welcome to Logan Rando Aquascaping. My name is Logan, and today we're gonna to talk about red aquarium plants. Why they're red in the first place, and how we can use a few fairly simple techniques to bring out even deeper, richer reds. So let's dive right into the topic. So the first thing we can talk about is why aquarium plants are red in the first place. There's a lot of biochemistry involved that even with my own degree in biology is quite a bit over my head. So I figured I'd distill it down into the basics, but as always, feel free to go deeper in your own research and figure out as much as you find interesting. So most of the aquarium plants you see are green and that's simply because they have a lot of chlorophyll and chlorophyll is responsible for taking in light and producing sugars, which are used to make new plant, basically. However, all plants also contain something called anthocyanin, and anthocyanins sort of pick up the slack that chlorophyll doesn't take care of. Again, that's an oversimplified explanation, but I think it'll help us understand it. So chlorophyll is green because it's primarily absorbing red and blue light and reflecting green light. Conversely, anthocyanin is red because it primarily absorbs green and blue light and reflects the red light. So the anthocyanins are able to make use of that green part of the spectrum much more than chlorophyll. Additionally, anthocyanins serve a really important purpose in plants and that's that they protect them from radiation. So any sort of light that hits a plant can cause damage, especially in excess amounts. So what anthocyanin does is it sort of acts like a sunscreen and it prevents radiation damage and instead converts that radiation into heat which is harmless and prevents damage to the plant's cells. So now that we have the basic understanding of what makes aquarium plants red in the first place, let's talk about some strategies to enhance those reds and bring out deeper, more vibrant pigmentation. As we discussed earlier, red pigmentation is very complicated and it varies significantly across each and every species you might keep in your aquarium. So certain species will respond very favorably to certain conditions and nutrient levels. Others won't so much. So you have to do individual research on the species that you're keeping and see how easy it is to bring out reds and if those conditions work for your other plants. Because above all, husbandry is very important and you wanna make sure that that your other plants aren't suffering to bring out reds in one particular species. So do your research and keep compatible plants. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you practice good husbandry and that your tank is well balanced. And by balanced, I mean that there's adequate lighting, adequate nutrients, adequate CO2, and nutrient-rich substrate. In order to bring out these very specific vibrant colors, you need to be in your tank weekly, doing the maintenance, doing the water changes, doing the trimmings, removing dead tissue. And once you have that all accomplished, then you can get more specific and you can start targeting specific parameters. So the first parameter you can target is the lighting. And you wanna increase the PAR as much as you can without causing an algae outbreak. The reason that red plants respond very favorably, at least to our eye, with increased PAR is that, as we mentioned earlier, anthocyanin sort of acts like a sunscreen. So when you hit those plants with more and more PAR, which is essentially radiation, they're gonna produce more anthocyanin to protect themselves from that radiation and will ultimately look more red. So ways you can increase the lighting is, number one, you could purchase a higher quality light, look up the PAR data, you know, get something more powerful than what you currently have, but if you're already working with something great, you can increase the intensity of it, or you can lower it. You can physically bring it closer to the surface of the water, which will provide higher power values. So with my own tanks, when I first set them up, I often have the intensity on the lower end, so like 50%, and if the height of the light is adjustable, I'm gonna have it fairly high. And then as the weeks go by, as the plants develop their root structures, I'm increasing the intensity of the light until it gets to 100, and then I'm slowly lowering the height until I reach favorable conditions. So once you have your lighting at a very high par value, you that works for the ecosystem of your tank, it's time to address the nutrients and target a few things. So I'm sure in the discussion of red plants, at one point or another, you've come across a forum post that talked about iron, 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 iron. You can't have enough iron. Well, I hate to say it, but 
that's mostly a myth. And wouldn't it be nice if you could just add a bunch of iron to your tank and get red plants? But unfortunately, that's just not how it works. Biology is a lot more complicated than that. And I kind of equate it with the whole fitness industry. I think it's still popular, but a few years ago, there was a really big trend in fitness where protein, 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 protein. You know, you'd see everybody at your gym, you know, even if they were super overweight or out of shape, just chugging protein shakes. And there's a kernel of truth to that. Yeah, to build new tissue and to build more muscle, you need protein, but at a certain point, your body can only digest and utilize and metabolize so much protein. So you're essentially just gonna pee out in excess. And that kind of goes for iron as well, is that yes, plants do need iron to create enzymes and to undergo metabolic processes, but it can only use so much of it. And in fact, anthrocyanin, the pigment responsible for red coloration, doesn't even use iron at all. Iron is required for certain metabolic processes and the synthesis of enzymes in order to create that anthrocyanin in the first place. So indirectly it's related, but an excess of iron is just not gonna do anything. You just wanna make sure that you're dosing enough iron so that your plants are gonna be healthy, but dosing in excess is not going to bring out any additional red pigmentation. So first and foremost, make sure that your tank has a balanced nutrient regime. So make sure that it's getting enough macronutrients and enough micronutrients. Now here's where we can get a little bit specific. We're gonna talk about nitrate limitation. So what does that mean? Nitrate limitation is reducing the amount of nitrates in your tank, potentially all the way up to zero. And this, through significant evidence and testing, does seem to produce a very favorable response. So in order to bring out red pigmentation through nitrate limitation, you have to make sure that you're providing enough of the other macronutrients, potassium and phosphates, and you have to make sure you're providing the other micronutrients. So once those things are in check, you can reduce the amount of nitrates you're adding. You can find products off the shelf that are low in nitrates, or you can just stop adding nitrates to your own DIY mix. And what's gonna happen is because you're limiting the amount of nitrates, the plant is gonna produce less chlorophyll, which as we discussed earlier is green, and instead it's gonna produce anthrocyanins to compensate and take in that light so it can create new energy. And to your eye, you will see more red in that plant. And once you've addressed those factors, I would consider finding a light or customizing the one you already own to really bring out red and blue peaks. So you can do your own research, but every light on the market tends to favor different colors in the lighting spectrum. So some of them are gonna have a green tint, some are gonna have a magenta tint, some are gonna have a blue tint. So by finding a light that has a nice balance of really strong reds and blues, to your eye, the reds in your plants will really pop a lot more. One example I can think of off the top of my head are twin star lights, at least the version one and version twos. They tend to have a very high magenta peak, so your reds are really gonna pop up. Other lights, they might peak a little higher in the greens, which are meant to bring out, you know, the vibrant greens in your tank. So choose your light selectively based on that. And if you have a smart light where you can customize the individual LEDs, you can sort of make sure that you have very strong red peaks and then balance it out with some blues so it doesn't look flat. So that's all the time we have for today. I really just kind of wanted to graze the surface of this topic. It can get very complicated, but I think the basic take homes are that it's really important to find species that easily demonstrate red so you're not killing yourself to bring out those colors. So definitely do your research. And then it seems to be fairly certain that nitrate limitations, highlighting, and otherwise good husbandry are gonna provide very favorable conditions for bringing out those reds. So with that all in mind, let me know down below in the comments what you specifically do to bring out reds and what your favorite red species are. My current favorite is Rotala H. Ra. I'm loving bringing out the reds in that and I'm having a really good time with it. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.